Hello and welcome to my fourth video. This is my update for August. Today is Sunday and it is the first Sunday in September. It's either the 5th or the 6th, I'm not entirely sure, um, but that means that this video is slightly late this month. Last weekend was a bank holiday in the UK um, and bank holidays in the UK, especially the summer ones, means that it rains um, so I was camping. Um, but despite the rain, we did have a very nice time and we were very lucky in actual fact because when we needed it to be dry, i.e. to kind of cook and to do all the bits that you need to do while you're camping, it was dry, apart from the last day where it just had a drizzle all morning. So um, by the time we took the tents down and packed everything away, we were quite wet. But that's okay. Um, a fun time was had. So um, the other reason I've delayed making this video is I have an FFO to show you today um, and I only collected it on Friday. So I wanted to delay making this video until I'd pick that up from the framers. But as you can see, the first project I have out in front of you is my Country Cottage Needlework um, Santa's Village, which I've chosen to stitch all in one. And if I pan out, you can see what I've done so far. My plan this month was to, or last month, sorry, was to work on the cottage that goes here. I think it's the Christmas tree. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the Christmas tree one. But I started stitching the border here and I thought, oh, well, this border just repeats itself. So I'm just going to keep going because I wasn't feeling particularly stitchy, I suppose, at the time. So I thought I'll just do something simple. Um, and then it got to the point where I just needed to come back and put the red berries on to these ones. As you can see, I mean, it's the same all the way along. I just wasn't feeling it. So this one kind of went away. And I think that really describes my spirit for the most of August. Um, Katie, aka the Stash Queen, has talked a lot about August angst and actually started a whole load of new starts to celebrate August angst. But I think I was having that from the beginning of the month, really. Um, I was off for the first week of August on holiday and I did get some stitching done then. But then unfortunately I was sick for a week, so I had to have a week off work, in fact. Um, and in that time I did no stitching, I really didn't feel like doing much of anything. But you will see the outcome of that as we get later on. So although this video will start with what I have done in August, it will also then finish with um, some new purchases because I kept myself busy while I wasn't very well. And it's really kind of taken me some time to feel like I wanted to pick my stitching up again. So I have got something to show you, but probably not as I, much as I thought I would have done this month. So anyway, let's put this one away. Um, this may make an appearance again this month, I'm not sure. So one of the things I um, had said that I was going to work on um, was a pattern from the Helen Phillips Cross Stitch Garden Notebook book. And this was part of Stitch Mania's August Angst. And the pattern that I had chosen, let me turn to the page, was this one called The Potting Shed. If I can just pull out so you can see it. Get it all in. There you go. And I really love this. I just like the, the tones in it. They're kind of, it's quite subtle. But um, I think something that's come become quite clear is I quite like um, little boxes. And you'll see what I mean by that as we go on today. Because I seem to have spent a lot of time sewing little boxes. Anyway, I'd ordered the fabric um, and all the material that came for it. But what I didn't know when I placed the order for the fabric was that it was on back order. So I didn't actually get this until the last week of August. So I've not didn't get to do as much as I wanted to. So this is the start that I've made at the moment. So little boxes, some little boxes, and then just some um, writing at the top. Now the sharp eyed amongst you might look at this and think, gosh, look at the Technicolor colours in here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see, but actually, well, in my camera, it's showing up quite well. You can see it's beigey, pinky, and um, then it goes blue, green, orange, then pinky, and then there's this blue at the end of the thread here. And I was really quite surprised at this because this, the potting shed, um, from memory, I think it's DMC 841, is really quite a subtle colour scheme or tone. And actually, I've put the threads out here. These are the threads that I've gathered for doing this. Um, and that multicoloured tone that was called for was this one. It's um, a Water Lilies by Karen and it's called Burnt Toast. Is that going to focus? Mm, I'm thinking about it, isn't it? Let's put it down because it doesn't look it's like it's going to do it quickly. Which is, when you look at it in the picture, maybe I should go back to the picture. 
you can see on here it's it's very I don't know it, it it looks kind of much more oranges and maybe soft beiges into a slightly kind of pinky taupe color so not really um, what I was expecting and I did go back and check the pattern um, and it does say on here that one of the requirements again I don't think it's going to focus is it it's Karen water lilies um, in burnt toast so I did get the right thread so then I checked when this book was made and it was printed in 2001 so I'm just wondering if maybe they've changed um, the dye lot since then um, now unfortunately when I first ordered this I think this is when I wasn't very well I seem to be doing a lot of stupid things I actually ordered and ordered um, watercolors by Karen um, in burnt toast so the the thicker ply but even if you look at this one you can see running through it it's got those that kind of there's that pink and then there's the blue in there and this is this is it here you can see it really is kind of a, a multi-coloured cotton the orange and the brown I think are kind of the predominant colours but you the, the pink is very definitely there so I'm a bit torn about this one because one I mean it's silk so it's absolutely beautiful to stitch with I, I love it it's it's a joy to work with um, really just feels so beautiful and I, even now I'm just kind of stroking it because it's so lovely um, but I'm not sure what it's going to work out in the end so I've kind of just decided to keep going at the moment to see well, really to see what it looks like and maybe I'll just have to have a kind of Joseph's multicolour um, raincoat kind of effect to my potting shed so um, I have also got some made purchases of some of the charms that are on here so you can see they've got these really sweet little terracotta pots which I've bought I managed to find the little um, charms so these are which way up are they? They're that way up. Sorry about the glare. Little watering cans. I only actually need one of those, but they came as a pair. And there's also um, this button by Mill Hill, a little beehive. Um, and there's just a couple of um, seed bees used on it as well. Gosh, my camera's really not wanting to focus today, is it? Um, these are 00161 because I don't think it's going to zoom in on there. Oh, I've not got the patience to wait for it to zoom in anyway. And then these are some of the other colours that you can see in here. So it's quite a muted palette. Hmm. And then you get the bright pinks and the blues. <laughs> so I don't know. I think I'm just going to be patient with it and see how it goes. And, and it should be a fairly quick stitch. But obviously because at first I didn't have the, the fabric and then I realised I'd ordered the wrong. Um, well, this is a cotton and I needed the silk, so I had to wait a bit longer before I actually started on it. So that kind of contrib contributed a bit to my August angst, but I got there eventually. And as you've seen, I have done some work on it. I'm just going to put these aside because they are actually terracotta um, and I don't want to risk any of those breaking. So I thought, well, you know, I wasn't really feeling much of my stitching. So I thought I would go back to an old faithful. So this is my Buffy Threads Kings and Queens. Um, and again, going with the Stitch Mania um, August alphabet or August ABCs I thought well this one's got writing on it so I could use this one so up until this point I had done this kind of top corner here most of it I um, as I've said before I hadn't finished all the metallics or done all of the back stitching um, but I picked this one up and I've just added in a couple more oops it's the wrong way around a couple more monics so let's zoom out on this one and as you can see up here I've added in a very angry shaking his fist King Stephen who by all accounts was not a very nice man let's see what they say about him on took throne from his cousin Matilda and caused 18 years of civil war so yeah he was a bit of a um what's a polite word <laughs> I won't say the word that's coming to mind let's just say he wasn't very nice and actually speaking of not very nice people I'm not sure that um this king was particularly nice either oh now who is he I think Edward III that's it, Edward III, and he started the Hundred Year War um, that we had with France. So, um, as I was feeling sorry for myself in August and not feeling particularly well, I didn't actually go back and do some of the back stitching that I thought I would do. I did start filling in some more of the metallic up here, and God, what a pig that was to work with. So I'm kind of thinking I might not persevere with the 
one that's been supplied in the pack, but I might actually swap it out for petite pressure, treasure braid or something at some point. Um, so not much done on this, but just a little one. Because And again, this is just something that I'm going to work on kind of in the background as a pattern, because it's quite a large one, as you can see. Um, so I pick that up kind of when and if I fancy. So then I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and get my mojo back a little bit. So I am going to have a new start because sometimes that kind of helps things. Now I don't have a photo of this one so I've just put in here um, what it's called. Um, dare I try and pronounce this? Le Pense Positive um, and it's part of a stitch along. Um, this is an, oh, I can't remember the name of the site that I got it from but if I remember I'll I'll try and let you know at the end but this has been shown quite a few times and it's available in French or English or German and I've actually chosen to stitch the French version and if I show you you might have a better idea of what I'm talking about move all the threads this is it here um, so as you can see at the moment let's move out of the way um, this um, top part here this is part one and it comes in five parts so I've just made a start on the lady in part two and again this fitted with the August ABC um, theme um, as it's got writing on it um, and I've chosen to do this in the charted colours which um, are um, Nina's thread so this is one of her cards here gosh my camera really doesn't want to play games with me today does it I was trying to let's go closer is it gonna I don't know if you can see it close enough to see her name or her website but it's um hand dyed by Nina and she does the most beautiful threads so I don't I mean hopefully you can see here you can see the variegation um, quite clearly in the fence but all of this green across here and this is absolutely beautiful this color I loved it as soon as I did it this is this is soot I think let me find Where's it gone? Let me just show you all of the threads that are going to be used in this pattern because you can see then just how beautiful they are and they come you know on these uh, little cards again I won't pronounce, try and pronounce all those names but this one's Old Berry um, another one which is kind of a variegated grey this is Grizzly I love this one this is Caribbean or for my American viewers Caribbean I believe it's you pronounce. There's Hunter, nice green. We have a pearl. This is olive oil. There's a really nice heather, which is in the little flowers you can see underneath. Oh, and this, yes, it is, it's soot. That's what the writing's done in. And this is a really pretty variegated kind of browns and light browns. I really like this one. It was, and it's really nice to. To stitch with as well so this is a beautiful and this is a free pattern that you can download even better um, and that's why I kind of thought well if the pattern's free and I've not paid for that I will pay for the um, the threads that it recommends and I'm really pleased that I do because um, Nina's uh, you know lovely to deal with very helpful um, and everything comes so packaged so beautifully and it was so, um, I've actually had this for a while um, and when I got it out and stitched, it reminded me of how I, much I liked it. So I actually, as I will show you later, I made another purchase from her. So that's another one that I started as August ABCs. And hopefully I'll get some work done on this one because it is, it's a really nice one to stitch. And I'm doing this on a, I believe this is a, just a 32 count um, antique linen. I'm not to show you the pattern because it's underneath there. So the next one I worked on, I pulled out another new start. <laughs> so these August angst. So this is what I was doing all the way throughout August. I didn't wait until the end of August to have my angst. I managed to have the angst for the whole of August. So I thought um, I'd show you this fabric at the end of my last video. This is Icicle by the Crafty Kitten. Um, and it's a 28 count cashel. It's a very um, soft um, and pliable um, fabric. Um, so I know Teresa Little Stitcher was looking for some recommendations about soft fabric or soft linens or even weaves and I can recommend um, the Crafty Kitten as one so I ordered this one from her I think last month or the month before um, but it is certainly a very pretty piece of linen to stitch on. 
And I was talking to you about boxes. So here are some more boxes for you to look at. It's very unexciting at the moment. Um, so this is, um, sorry, I'll just show you. This is Lizzie Kate. This is Six Fat Men. And they're a series of little flip -its. And the one that I'm working on at the moment, because I didn't quite finish the box down here. Beautiful variegated thread. I think these are all, let me have a look, Weeks Dye Works. This is, I think it's called Tiger's Eye from memory. It really is very, very beautiful. Um, but what my plan is, is to stitch them all together. Ooh, and again, focusing is going to be an issue today, isn't it? Um, all together, um, as you can see here. They've done it on um, like a beigey, um, neutral background. But I chose this kind of icy blue because I thought that would be quite pretty. The one thing I'm, well, there are a couple of things with this one. Because as you can see at the moment, there's kind of a box missing here. Um, and that's because that thread is on order at the moment. And I'm still waiting for that to come through. Um, and then so I thought, well, I'll stitch on the, the, the pattern that comes with, you know, that shows you how to put it all together. But the only colour I had was the black. So I didn't get very far with it. In fact, I think that's a blue. That's not a black. Um, so I didn't get much done of that. Um... Now the other thing, um, I thought to try and just keep the price down a little bit, I would swap out um, what they've used for the white, for the snow on this. And I'm just going to have a quick look inside. To, uh, yeah, it's a whitewash by Weeks Dye Works. And the recommended replacement in DMC was 712, which is this. And it was showing up fairly true to light, but it's a really kind of creamy almost beigey colour. Basically it doesn't look like snow. So I think actually having now kind of put the cotton against the, the fabric and, and seeing what it's going to look like, I might actually have to go back and and either buy the weeks or just find a different colour for doing this in because that's that's just too different. That and that just looks like snow that's been lying around and is dirty. That's kind of really not the look that I'm going for. So I might have to go back to the drawing board on that one. So that's that's just another one. And I just started this one because I was a bit bored, had my August angst. So there's no real plan to work on this or get this done quickly. Um, and I, I also chose it because I just thought doing squares would be quite simple and non-taxing when I wasn't feeling great. Although, going back to it, if I can find it, where is it? I did manage to make a mistake. Because I was so busy counting and sewing my square that I didn't realise until after I'd done it. I don't know, you're not going to be able to see it on here, I don't think very clearly. There should be like an eight stitch gap on this pink one. So I'm going to have to go back and pick out eight of the stitches um, on here at some point. And I just thought, at the time I spotted it, I couldn't be bothered to go back and do it. So that's a job to be done at some point. So let's move that aside. And then going back right to the very beginning of August, after I'd kind of put down my country cottage needlework houses, um, I went looking for something different to do because I wasn't feeling very interested. So I got all of my magazines out and I reminded myself of this pattern and this little girl. So this pattern is called Pieces of Autumn and it was, I think this was the first, oh yeah, yeah the first in a series, um, the first in a series of these charming characters you can see up here, Bell and Boo. And um, this isn't just within cross stitch. I'm pretty sure Bell and Boo is kind of out there on stationery and cards and whatnot now. But I just really love this piece. There's something very simple about it. And I don't know, I think this girl's really very pretty. And it's very autumnal and with all the leaves blowing. And you can see the wind blowing at the Boo's ears and catching her scarf. I just really loved it. I thought this was a lovely pattern. So I thought... I'm going to do something completely different. So I did. So this, so far, is what I've done of Belle. Now, this I've stitched, I think it's just a 28 count even weave. Um, it's kind of a light blue fabric that I had in my stash. So I just kind of, as I, I hadn't planned on starting it, so it was very much, I just went to see what I had. Um, and this was um, a big enough piece of fabric, so I pulled it out and, and off I went, basically. Um, which is actually true because off I went is exactly what I did without reading the instructions because it was only as I was going through it, I think I'd stitched all of the scarf and then then I thought I'd read the instructions, as you do. And that's when I realised actually the recommendation for this was to stitch three over two rather than two over two, which is what I've always done before. I've never stitched three over three before. And I was 
it was when actually I know what it was it's when I started doing the hair so I was doing this darker brown color the shading that you can see and I really wasn't particularly happy with the coverage I thought you could just see too much of the blue underneath and I was doing lots of oh you know maybe if I come further out and hold it away from me it won't look so bad etc etc and I, I still wasn't happy <laughs> and that's when I went back and looked at the instructions and thought oh yeah I'm doing two over two and it says three over two so I unpicked um, all of the the dark brown that I'd done and then I started stitching three over three so her hair her face this really cute little hat with the pom-pom all of her jumper and the shading on it is done three over three um I haven't unpicked the scarf as yet I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do about that it kind of doesn't look too noticeable that it's done in a different um with one less thread I don't know, what do you think? Can you tell? Would you have known if I told you? Hmm. I think you might because you can definitely get a, a clearer colour definition because you can see it very clearly in her hair. You can see it quite clearly around the edges of her cap. Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. So it's quite a... I mean, I think this was... I don't know how many days this took me. I wasn't really paying particular attention as you could tell I wasn't paying particular attention because I didn't read the instructions um, but I don't really take notice of how long something takes me I kind of just kept working on it because I'd got so far and I think I was halfway through a jumper when I was thinking oh maybe it's time to put this one down and do something else and I thought actually you know what no I'd rather just get all of the jumper done um, and then put it down because it would be easier um, to pick up after that so if we go back to the pattern you can see I've got her trousers boots boo and then all these lovely kind of autumnal leaves to do as well so I quite enjoyed working on that one so that one might come back out again this month I guess as we're going into September and it's well it's actually a really beautiful day today having felt very autumnal this last week to the point where I actually had to put my heating on because I was so cold it is bright blue skies today sun's out I've got the window open it I mean it's lovely <laughs> anyway so that's the other thing I worked on. The final thing I worked on was the beginning of the month. And this, oh, if I bring it in, is my FFO. Oh, and it's upside down. And this is, oh, let's see. Can I rest it there? Is my ABC of, oh, I can never remember what it's called. This is, let's have a look. ABC of Aging Artfully Kit by Lizzie Cade. So, Again, August ABCs, I thought this would be quite good to give myself a push and get this finished because I've had it around, let's go back a bit, for about two years. It will be two years this October, I think, since I bought the pattern. I haven't been working on it all that time. Um, and I think last time I showed this, I was, I had I done all of the procrastinate? I certainly started it um, along here. So the first week of August, I th and this was when I was on leave, I kind of just thought, I'm just going to push it and I'm going to get it done because I haven't had a, a finish finish for a while. Um, and now I not only have a finish finish, but I have a fully finished object because as you can see, it's framed and I'm really happy with this one. I'm really, really pleased. I kind of went for a very neutral um, colour scheme on the, yeah, whatever these are called. <laughs> Tim, I think my brain's giving up on me here. What are these called? You know what they're called. You're probably all shouting at the camera because that's the kind of thing I do when you're when I'm watching YouTube. Anyway, I went for very um, neutral colours, so kind of just went with this very kind of, this brown because I thought that picked out the colours. I did try it with like pinks and blues and yellows, but it then just felt like it was it was focusing too much then on the colours, whereas it's quite evenly spread at the moment, um, and I really wanted that to stand out. And I've just left it in the protective bit at the moment until I actually get round to the point where I'm going to hang it on the wall because at the moment it's just sitting in the corner and I don't want it to get damaged. But I'm really, really happy with this. Very pleased. And hopefully you can see it quite well and you haven't got too much glare. I think I've succeeded in getting the angle right. Yeah, so I just picked this up on Friday. Um, I will say there is one mistake in it that I've spotted. I'm not going to point it out to you. If you've seen it, well done. You can keep some though. <laughs> I don't need you to point it out to other people. And then the one, oh, I made, I pointed out the changes I made last time. The other thing that I did for this one um, is I have found a space to put my initials and the year in which I completed it. I don't know if anyone spotted it yet, but let's just zoom in to see if you can see it. 
because I put it on one of the book spines when well, that is going to get a bit glary there isn't it but I've just written my initials and then the year in which I completed it on the bottom of the books here so actually you do have to go in quite close to see it so if I peer around the camera at this angle I can't really see that it's there so I know it's there yeah so I'm really pleased with that one so that is all of the stitching that I have done Ooh, on the floor for this month now when I wasn't very well um oh actually before that so when I was on my holiday I went home to my parents and I did some charity shop shopping and I did actually buy quite a few little things now one of them I can't find I bought a little pattern and it is in I'm just going to show you this one it's in this the silhouettes um range got a picture of it. oh no don't say no, I don't want to show the pattern, um, but I can't find what I've done with it, but I picked it up. This one retail price was £8.50, but the, the pattern, it, the whole kit, it all came together, was 99p in a charity shop. And I couldn't pass this up. And having bought that one, I then saw this one on eBay for 99p. So I bought the second one to go to go with that pattern. So that's just something to kind of add to my stash. It looks like quite a quick stitch, but I actually really like the colours. It's Again, it's a very soft palette I don't, maybe just it's an autumn thing I just seem to be looking at these very kind of pastely soft colors at the moment seem to be catching my eye anyway other things that I bought I found this um Gloria and Pat design called the Merry Mouse Book of Opposites and this was in Oxfam I've never had any Gloria or Pat um patterns before and um, I wasn't really sure about whether this would be my thing but do you know since I've started cross stitching and since I've been watching YouTube and on some of the Facebook groups what I like and what I dislike has changed so dramatically that I thought you know what I'm going to buy this because who knows in a few years time this might be exactly what I'm looking to stitch so and they are kind of quite cute just um, going to move it aside because there was one in here that caught me completely but yeah let's come back so here's um, a few more of the patterns that you can see are available in here I really quite like this one of the older mum um, and I quite like these two kind of chatting hanging out on their um, stems of straw as well so yeah so that's just a little bit of something to add to my stash supporting a good cause as well in the same shop, I also managed to find this book of The Duck Pond. Um, and you might have seen my mallard from the last video, that I, or the last couple of videos that I've posted, but this is another one in the theme. And the one that really made me laugh and I was really quite attracted to here, well, I really like the ducks with the baby ducks in here, but I also really like this one and you can't see it very clearly, but it's a duck's bottom sticking out of the water. <laughs> How fabulous is that? So I really like that one as well. So pick that one up not, not going to stitch anything out of here for a while but I'll quite happily keep that on my bookshelf and then I also found these really sweet little birds this is a ooh, country cost stitch what's it by can you read that I can't read that Carolyn Shaw's right called I think it says spring nestlings under the sticky um, and again as you can see it's just some little birds and they're really really cute I like this one here in particular but I also quite liked him down on this one as well I'm really sorry I don't know why it won't focus today mm -hmm. final um, pattern that I picked up was this Delft sampler um, by Better Homes um, and I just really like these this blue and white look of the Delft sampler um, it's got a little thing on the front to mother saying listener teacher a miraculous blend of peacemaker counselor and the best kind of friend which is really quite kind of sweet but I have to say it's not the kind of thing that I would stitch for my mum I'm much more likely to st stitch at the duck's bottom to be honest <laughs> and that probably tells you everything you need to know about me um not that that tells you about the relationship I have with my mum not at all <laughs> she would probably much more appreciate the dog's bo duck's bottom as well <laughs> than something like this um, but I really like the colour scheme in it and I kind of down at the bottom they show you here they've done some different things with just some of the individual tiles so I thought that's much more something I'm likely to do or you know I actually quite like the frame as itself so whether I could find something different to put in the middle but again I thought you know something that can sit in my stash quite happily so um, I did that 
And then I was very lucky because I also found, so my, the pattern that I showed you at the beginning, the potting shed is by Helen Phillips. So I found another book um, by Helen Phillips and this is called Home Sweet Home Cross Stitch. Um, and you can see it's got this really pretty pattern of houses on the front. I don't know. Oh yeah, there's a few more on the back. Um, I'm pretty sure this one's been in a magazine um, before now because I it looks familiar to me. Um, but I liked her style, so I, I picked that one up. And then I also managed to find Cross Stitch Garden Projects, and this is a book by Joanne Sanderson. And I quite like this little one on the front here with all the little vegetables. I really like the radishes, although I really don't like radishes. But I thought they looked quite cute stitched, and that's how they should stay, really. I don't want to be eating them. It's not really anything to show you on the back. So I kind of came away doing really well having been to the charity shop. So I'm quite pleased with all of my acquisitions. Nothing particularly that I'm going to stitch straight away, but that's fine. I'm quite happy for them to sit on my bookshelf. Oh, gosh, half an hour and I've still got lots to show you. Um, if you don't like the idea that somebody spent a lot of money <laughs> and you don't like to see all, look away now. Um, so the first things were... Uh, Pretty, pretty straightforward but in the UK DMC is quite pricey so I found on a very famous internet site who really don't need any more advertising by me these two sets of DMC and um, this one's got 27 colours and this one is I think 30 30 in here um, and obviously you don't get to choose what DMC colours you want but this when I worked it out this was the equivalent I was paying um I think basically I, would, I was getting three in the packet for the price that I would pay for one skein. So that just made a lot of sense to just kind of invest um, in these colours. And I did check out the ones that are in the back and they've got some, you know, that I know that, you know, well, I know that I'll use them. So I've added those as such to my collection. I then went on a bit of a fabric binge as well. So here are some fabrics to show you. Um, and I haven't, I've been to lots of different places to get these. So the first one is... Um, by KLT Charting and this is called Tree Nymph which is a very pretty oh, hold it, blend of pinks and there's some very slight blues in here and then some kind of well, it's looking quite creamy yellow here but it's a much more subtle on the fabric um, and I thought that was a very pretty little one and that might do for a fairy or something I'm not quite sure but I quite like that one and so that is um, Tree Nymph and it's a 28 count Brittany and Teresa if you're watching it's a very soft um, fabric as well, soft linen um, and then I also bought the uh, I think this was the August, yes it is, the August limited edition which I saw on the site and I thought was absolutely beautiful and very different from anything I've got um, so what's this called, it's called Summer Shenanigans hmm? with an exclamation mark summer shenanigans <laughs> and again this is a 28 count Brittany and it's a it's a very soft and very pliable kind of um, fabric as well and um, but it's got these really beautiful colours in it so really nice blues and peaches and actually this does look fairly true to life this this bit here seems a bit darker on camera than in real life but otherwise y y the mottling effect is coming up really well that's another one I've tried to take all of these out of the bags to show you the next, oh, saying that, the next one isn't out of the bag. I said I went back to Nina's Threads, and I did, and this is another one I bought from her, and this is, oh, I, haven't taken, I haven't taken it out because it's so beautifully wrapped. Everything you buy from Nina, it comes just perfectly packaged, and it's got all these lovely little, you know, finishing touches, this little band around the fabric, and, you know, she's got this lovely little sticker that she puts on here, um, which says, hopes this packs will um, thank you for your order it made my day hope this pack will brighten yours and it does because it's just so beautiful this is called apricot and it is a linen I can't remember what count I ordered I think I ordered 32 count in the end I ummed and ahed about this for ages and it's for a project that I haven't actually pulled out to show you but um, it might make an appearance in my next video because then I also ordered from her some more threads and again I haven't pulled these out but again you can see just these beautiful little stickers that come on the bags it's all just so done with real care it's 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 lovely um but you can see there's a really nice kind of muted again muted pastel colors this this seems to be what's calling to me at the moment but really very beautiful um thread that she has in there so I shall look very much forward to using these 
something completely different which I'd actually ordered a couple of months ago. This is a picture, this plus um, linen and this is called Prank and I bought this in a fat quarter and it's probably a bit duller on camera, it's a little bit more of a rich orange in real life and I've bought this for a Halloween project. This is, it's, it's, again, it's quite a pliable linen but it does have a slightly, I think rough would be unfair, but it's definitely got a more of a texture to it than some of the other linens. Um, that one. Uh, this one is a beautifully soft linen. This is um, a Zygert 28 count French coffer mocha, and I brought a fat quarter of this one. And this is a really soft, pliable, um, kind of neutral fabric and I do have something in mind for this so I've just been doing a bit of kitting up, up, up projects um, but this is obviously a long way in advance unless I have another September like my August where I just decide that I'm going to do lots and lots of new starts which I'm not ruling out at the moment. I bought another Zweigert um, linen and again this one's quite soft it's got quite a nice this almost feels like it's got a bit of a sheen to it to touch so nice to handle a little bit yeah, quite soft. This is um, 32 count um, light mocha and so I just bought a fat eighth of this one. I don't think this one, it might have been for a project, but if I bought it for a project, I really can't remember what it was for. I might have to go and look it up because I'm pretty sure I, I've written it down somewhere. Um, and then these two are both um, from Jodgery Designs and these are the fabric of the month for August which is called Regal Peacock, Peacock, sorry, Peacock, Peacock. Um, so this uh, one on the left, you can see, is a 28 cashel linen. Oh, is that right? No, take it back. It's a 28 count opal Brittany fabric, which is what I know is my standing order from her. And it's absolutely beautiful. I just can't believe how beautiful this piece of fabric is. I, I love it. And I knew when I saw it that I was going to love it um, because the pictures were posted online. So I went on straight away to the website and I said, you know what, I like this so much. I would like to order another piece, but I'm going to order a 28 count cashel linen. And this is what I got. And it's completely different from the first one. But again, I absolutely love it. I think it's beautiful. Let's open this up. It's not completely open yet, but look at that. Isn't that a fabulous colour? So, so pretty. Um, I don't know if it's... Yeah, the purple looks a bit darker on the camera than it is in real life, but oh my God, it is beautiful. And then I can't believe how different they are. <laughs> so I know that the fabric takes colour different depending on what the fabric is and whether it's got the opal kind of lessons in it as well. I'm so pleased I bought the two because... You know that thing about, oh, well, if you get two the same, it might be a bit too samey. Certainly not in this case, but really, really happy. I did actually order some of the thread as well, but um, I know other people have shown it, so I haven't bothered pulling that out um, today. Um, but again, really pleased with the thread as well. So fantastic. So lots and lots of fabric this month. I did also buy, well, obviously the one the potting shed's on, but I also just bought a Zygert, Zygert. Swigart, I don't know how you pronounce it to be honest. This is just a 28 count Brittany antique white, quite a big piece, but just something to have in my stash because you know you can never have enough. And again, this is a very soft um, and pliable fabric. So if you're looking for something that's got a, is a bit more tactile and quite nice to work with and isn't going to kind of be a bit like chipboard when you're trying to put it into your frame or your um, your R and R scroll frame, oh, not scroll frame, clip frame. This would be a nice one to work with. Gosh, I think this is going to be my longest video yet, you guys. So, um, you might think, gosh, Claire, you've been busy. Well, that's not the end of it. <laughs> As I pull in the next bit for you to see. I'm just going to move this all on the floor because it's all going to fall, so let's get it out of the way. Sorry if you're getting dizzy watching this. When you're poorly, what do you do? You tool around on the internet, or at least that's what I did. And so I did some bidding and I was actually quite successful at a few of these. And the first ones that I got was this series of little kits. Um, they're all um, kind of Le Petite, Le Petite Regions de France. Again, apologies to anyone French because I've just murdered the language there. This is a set of um, six, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in fact. 
um, originally priced at three pack, three euros fifty each. Um, I do like all of them there, and they're all very obviously quick little stitches. Um, and I I picked them because I've been to all of these places on holiday in France. But in particular, the one I liked was this one with the stalks on it, because um, this reminds me of a place we stayed in Alsace. Um, well, it's not far from where we were staying, and I've actually been back here a few times now. Called Wickweir, um, and they have these special um, kind of I don't know what you call them, bits that they put on their chimneys, which the storks can then build their, their nests on. Um, and if you're very, very lucky um, when you visit there, you get to see the storks in situ sitting um, with their young. I saw lots of storks when I was there. I didn't see any sitting on their nests. So one day when I go back, I will see them. That's, that's one of my ambitions. Um, but it's a place I went on holiday with my mum and dad, and it's got some kind of special memories. And it's a really beautiful town to visit as well, so I would highly recommend it. Um, if you're ever, if you ever find yourself in that area, I'm trying to think if it's got a cross stitch shop. Don't know if it's got a cross stitch shop. I think it had a Christmas ornament shop, which I love just as much or almost as much as cross stitch shops. <laughs> so anyway, so that's that was just a mini kit that I I saw and I liked. And speaking of minis, I also found this one, which is called Bitty Bee, and it really is a Bitty Bee, or as they've set here, an Itty Bitty. And this is just something for up by the twisted thread. So I got that one. I also found a shepherd's bush. And this is called Checkered Sheep. And I really, really like this. And it's like a, a little board game. And you've got all these little sheep down the bottom. And all, all these little squares. See, all the little squares are coming into it. There's definitely something about pastels and squares. But the thing I also liked about all of these patterns so far is they're I've never had a shepherd's bush design. I've never had one by Twisted Thread. I've also never had one by Just Nan. And so this, again, squares. This is Hoppington Hill by Just Nan. And as you can see, it's a pattern to make a cube. So you stitch all of the, the sides and it's it's um like an Easter pattern. So you've got your little chicks along here. You've got little bunnies in a basket. You've got daffodil and bunnies on here. You've got a row of bunnies and I think these are Easter eggs here. And then you've got bunnies and carrots on this one and some kind of daisy bunting up here. It's really, really pretty. Um, but I thought this would be good because it's something different and it's kind of a finishing in and of itself, which I think is just now does a lot of this kind of thing. Um, no plans to stitch it at the moment, but you know, maybe Easter next year. It's really cute. I really like it. <laughs> Give me the pattern. Um, I then found a butternut road pattern that I've never seen before and couldn't resist. Um, I have to say as well, for a lot of these, I managed to get them at a really good price as well. So I, I know there's a lot, which I think is part of why there is a lot, is because I I think I paid kind of 99p or £1.50 for a lot of these. Pretty sure I paid 99p for this one. Um, and this is um, called, I think it's called Once Upon a Time. Yes, Once Upon a Time. And this is one by um, Marion Levitt in Bloom. I'm sorry if I've got that name wrong. But I really like this. It's a Told in the Garden one. And I've got a couple of these now. And I just thought this was lovely. I like how it's got the kind of, the colourful gown but then it's got this sepia background to it and then the next one I really really like and this is Take Time to Read and this is a Jeanette Douglas design um, and this manages to combine everything that I love because if you look at it boxes it's cross stitch and it's about reading lots of things in there I like and actually if you look closely um, it's got a uh, it's going to be difficult because I don't think it's going to... Is it going to focus? Maybe a little bit. It's got... This is a bit of Bargello here. There are some speciality stitches in here. And it's really, really lovely. This might have to be stitched sooner rather than later. Mm. But I haven't got any supplies. I haven't looked at it. Who knows? Um, I was enabled... This, this wasn't on eBay. I think that's all the eBay purchases I had. That's certainly enough, isn't it? I was then enabled by, oh, I can't remember your name, but I know lots of people are doing these, but the Celtic Santas by Mill Hill. Um, so I purchased two of these. In fact, I think I bought these last month, but they just came in this month. 
Um, so I've chosen the whale centre, which has come out, so there's no glare, but I left the island centre in, so apologies for the glare. But my mum is originally from Wales and my dad is originally from, well, my dad's family is from Ireland, although he was born in London. Um, and I thought these would be really great kind of little Christmas presents. Maybe next year, <laughs> maybe not this year, because I think it's 16 weeks or something ridiculous to Christmas. I did think about taking this one camping with me. In fact, it came camping with me. So I took the perforated paper out. I did get the thread out to, to organise it. I hate it when they give it like this. Why will they not organise your thread for you? How difficult is Well, <laughs> how difficult is it? Maybe not difficult. It's just one of those things that I don't enjoy doing. Um, but I didn't do any stitching while I was camping. One, because um, it got quite dark quite early. So, um, But also because we were sat around the campfire and I didn't really want my cross stitch to smell so that's one of the considerations why I didn't take any of my other ones because I just didn't want to get wood smoke in them and because they're either hand dyed fabrics or hand dyed threads I'm not going to wash them so I thought this might be a good compromise but then it it didn't you know I carried it there I, I bought it back <laughs> um and then then just you'll be happy to know I'm getting to the final few things of that I purchased I then bought some books so I was looking around on Amazon again while I wasn't very well and I found this one which is again it's another French thing I seem to have a bit of an obsession with France at the moment don't I um, I've got a few of them in this series but this is a, a new one on me kind of all these different seaside um, ones and I could show you probably a few patterns so there's there's one here there's one with lots of lighthouses that I quite like. Yeah, here you go. All these little lighthouses and the row of boats down there. And then you've got kind of an um, alphabet um, with lots of little seaside themes on it. It's one of those books where I can't show you that much more of it because it, it, it does a few pages where it puts them all together. But the, the, the rest of this, it's just a quick flip, you can see it's all just little... Um, images that you can stitch and then sew up into your own kind of sampler if you like um, so really handy little book I really like that I don't know maybe it's the French thing again maybe it's because it's quite the pastel colours who knows um, I also bought this um, La Boutique La Boutique mm, gosh who knows um, very pretty little book lots and lots of lovely patterns in here I've shown you another book I have with some um, French um, shops in it um, I'm just going to flick through this one while I talk but I saw this one online and I'm sure when I get to it you'll see I mean I, I love this one I liked it because it's got the the shop but then they've also added additional bits to it yum <laughs> um, but as I flick through I think you'll probably see the one that when I was looking because you can look in some books now when, um, when you look on the website the one that really made me want to buy this I, I do like this one um, so when I get to it you'll probably all say oh yeah I love that one I think it's coming up any minute now isn't that cute all of those vegetables I think that's so pretty the flowers I like it's just got individual things that you could stitch as well like garden shears I don't know where else I'd look for a picture of garden shears an idea of how you finish it how beautiful is that again it's just a really beautiful book really nice to have out on your coffee table come on where's this pattern there it is look at that isn't that beautiful absolutely loved it so as soon as I was flicking through and I saw this one I knew that I was going to buy the book and I'm really pleased actually because there's quite a few others I like. Um, obviously this is my favourite one but the one over the page comes in a close second because this really reminds me of where I was on holiday in France last year. A place called Barge down in the south of France. Um, oh and it was beautiful, uh, really beautiful. But lots of these really are kind of old fashioned um, shop selling all these things that you want to buy your buckets and spades and things for the seaside really really lovely so I quite like that one as well which makes a big change because this is very bright and very colourful so maybe that's a summer next year thing um, is there are a few more in here that I could show you oh yes, oh this is cute isn't it a little toy shop at Christmas time oh and then I think I think I think I think 
Oh yeah, it just shows you a few of them done together. Some people. Oh, and then it shows you the row of house, row of shops all together. I think. Yeah. Then it goes on to the patterns. So can't show you any more of that book, but really nice book. Very pretty. Love it. I keep picking it up every so often and looking at it. And then a final purchase was. Um, this is a second-hand book, A Woman's World in Cross Stitch by um, Jane Elliott. I'm sure a lot of you recognise this one, if not for this pattern down here, which um, Caroline ha um, has stitched herself and made it into a pincushion as well like this. But I know, I think it's Letitia, the crafty curator, is also stitching a pattern from in this book. So I thought this was one to kind of add to my collection and have on my bookshelf. And it was only a couple of pounds, so it was a bit of a bargain as well. Um, Sharp Eyes Among You would have also noticed another purchase. This is one I wanted to make a couple of months ago, but um, only just got round to it. I was doing a search for something online, and this image popped up, and I loved it. Absolutely beautiful. Again, beautiful colour tones in this. Um, it is a... Ooh. Ooh, 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 Nora Corbett. Name went from my head. Um, design. It is one of the flower fairies, and this is ooh, what's it called? I've got a pattern under here. Sunflower fairy. I should have known that because it's got sunflower and it's got a fairy. Um, it couldn't be more obvious, really, could it? <laughs> and this was available as a download. I bought as a a PDF, um, and I bought it from Hershner's, which is great, obviously, because living in the UK, I didn't have to pay postage or anything for it um, and as a pdf it is it was slightly cheaper i think than you would normally pay for for patterns but i love this one so much i have in, in kind of my stash enhancement for september i have bought all the threads um and so i'm just waiting for those to come through which i thought they'd be here kind of friday or saturday but just i think with the bank holiday it slowed it down a little bit because i really want to stitch this one it's beautiful really really lovely um and of course, you know, when you're looking, you can't just buy one. I did also have this one fall into the shopping cart as well, which is um, another, um, you'll recognise it. I'm sure other people have done this one. This is the Trick or Treat um, Halloween Fairy. It's very pretty. So it's been a, a funny old month. I've um, not stitched as much as I thought I would. I've spent a lot more than I had planned on spending. Um, I think I'm pretty glad the month is over, to be honest, and that we're into September because I really feel like I just want to put August behind me now. Um, I am working on something different already, having moved into September, but that will come into my next video. Um, a bit like Tara or Jess said on her video, I try not to plan too far on ahead because if I start planning things, I then get stressed if I miss deadlines or... I don't get done what I want to do and I do try to keep my stitching kind of very fun and very you know it's it's an enjoyable hobby I don't want to feel that there's a deadline or that there's any pressure on me to do anything so it's very much I'll work on a piece um, when I've done as much as I want to um, or I feel that I'm at a place when I can move on or usually because I haven't got the fabric or I haven't got the thread to do the next bit then I'll put that down and I pretty much pick up whatever takes my fancy so I'm very much going to go with the flow this month. Um, I am stitching again, which is great because there are probably about two, two and a half weeks in August where I did no stitching. Um, and then just one week where I did quite a lot of stitching because I was on holiday. So swings and roundabouts really, but I've kind of stitched for at least the last three days, which is the most consistent I've been um, since the beginning of August. I didn't stitch at all at the beginning of September so um, I'm quite keen not to do anything that makes me feel like I don't want to stitch so who knows I guess you'll just have to tune in next month to see what I'm doing because it will be a surprise to you and it will have been a surprise to me as well anyway I hope everybody's well keep the videos coming I'm really enjoying seeing what everyone else has been doing I apologise for the handheld shaky action that you've had today and also the fact that I am probably going to be just under 55 minutes. So that's probably enough for me. So I shall say goodbye. Bye.